For the past few years, I had a pretty good internet provider here in Ukraine. Their premium service gave me a 200 megabit down, 100 megabit up connection. My pings were relatively low across Europe, the highest being around 50 milliseconds to London as I'm based in Kyiv. Back in May, I switched to a gigabit provider that began servicing my area earlier this year. After putting both of these connections through their paces and conducting a few tests of my own using different measurements and now hardware, I have to say that as my internet speed and bandwidth increased to one gig up and one gig down, the difference I saw in latency and performance became less noticeable. And let me explain. Say you live in California and for the year of 2019, you made $20,000 but then you started a business that took off at the beginning of the next year and ended 2020 making $2 million. Your standard of living would change dramatically compared to what it was in 2019. However, if the success of your business doubled on into the next year and you made $4 million by the end of 2021, your standard of living wouldn't really change as much as it did after 2019. So the question is, does an extremely fast internet connection make a huge difference for gaming when compared to a standard connection? With this new gigabit provider, all my connections are only about 10 milliseconds lower on average. So is latency the most important metric to consider for gaming? If not, and once a connection reaches a certain speed, what other factors come into play? Okay, so before I go any further talking about performance, I do need to introduce these two routers. Um, the first is the Mercusis AC1200G. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's pretty standard. It was the one suggested by the uh, service provider. Uh, it costs like 30 bucks. And uh, for what it is, I have absolutely no complaints. Like it did its job. It delivered the full gigabit speed, no problem. Logging in using the router software to like open ports for Quake Champions was uh straightforward and easy so it, it, like it's it certainly served its purpose and like i have no complaints i have no complaints about this piece of hardware but with that being said there are other things happening on an internet connection beyond just one guy sitting around playing quake for example uh, there's my streaming pc my wife on the wi-fi and you know you take these things into consideration and now i think like okay uh so there's other people using the bandwidth um, that's going to introduce uh, some more traffic on the connection. How do I, how can I, con how can I control for packet loss? So as time went on and I settled into this nice new fast connection, uh, this began to claw at me more and more. And before I knew it, I was losing sleep at night and waking up in fits of rage. Not really. But these were factors that I began to look into, and that is when I stumbled upon a thing called buffer bloat. And as it turns out, buffer bloat can have adverse effects on your connection while gaming. Okay, so what is buffer bloat? As I understand it, buffer bloat refers to latency spikes caused by network traffic, especially when your bandwidth is under load. Imagine you are sending a file to a friend, you'll most likely send it at your connection's maximum uploading speed. However, if you were to be playing a game while that upload is in progress, you would not only experience lag, but massive latency spikes as well. This is because the packets you are sending to the game server are arriving at an inconsistent rate due to the file upload maxing out your bandwidth. Now, that's a pretty simple explanation, but my recent experience with buffer bloat took me down a bit of a rabbit hole. So the inconsistency between my buffer bloat score on DSL reports and what, you know, DSL reports was showing me A plus across the board, A plus, A plus on everything. It was like supposed to be perfect, but on waveform, it was giving me a B and it said that I could experience some connectivity issues due to buffer bloat. And yeah, this is like, this was annoying. So I was looking into solutions such as uh, SQM or smart queue management and open WRT. And, you know, I would implement these probably with a new router, all in an effort to achieve an A or A plus rating on waveform and like eliminate the buffer bloat. But the more I looked into the issue, the more I realized that since I'm pulling higher speeds with my fiber connection, the buffer bloat that is showing up on my score in the form of latency spikes in excess of 60 milliseconds, um, these are only occurring when the connection is under load. And this is key because when I'm playing Quake Champions, the game is never going to utilize more than 50 megabits of bandwidth and certainly nowhere near one gigabit. 
And while that doesn't mean that a faster connection won't lower latency, the bandwidth will still be utilized, just not under load, like when I'm sending files, like buffering 4K YouTube videos, and so on. However, while I'm playing Quake Champions and streaming, and I like to stream at 1080p, 60fps, and you know have a nice, smooth, uh, non-distorted stream, uh, when I do that, much more bandwidth is going to be used. And this brings us back around to buffer bloat and packet loss. And that's why I decided to give this new router a try, the X Netgear XR500. Uh, it comes ready to use with features that are designed to minimize buffer bloat and specifically allow gamers to achieve the most stable connection they are capable of. Whew. Now, there's the, there's the mouthful of marketing fluff for you, but does any of this actually work? And will it get rid of my buffer bloat? Let's find out. If we head into Netgear's Duma OS, we'll see that they have a pretty awesome feature for console gamers, and that allows you to connect only to servers within a certain distance of your location using the Geo filter. Obviously, I'm not a console gamer, so this doesn't really apply to me, but I have played my share of console games online, and this would be pretty useful because most console games don't allow you to filter by server location. Now let's move on to the quality of service tab because that's where things get interesting. At the top, we have the anti-buffer bloat feature that you can apply to the traffic you prioritize as high. Obviously that would be my gaming PC, or you can just set the anti-buffer bloat setting to always on. What's interesting about this though is that after playing around with these settings, they made absolutely no impact on my waveform score. And when I was playing Quake in game, I didn't really notice any difference as well. So I think it was, I think these settings are more like oriented towards console um, and for improving performance uh, on console, but not really for PC gaming. And, you know, I realized that waveform is only one method of testing for buffer bloat. So I don't mean to say that the anti buffer bloat features that Netgear offers here that they do nothing. I don't mean to say that. It's just that for this test, I saw no change when using it. But what Netgear has made it easy to do is to limit your bandwidth. Bandwidth limiting is a method that prevents you from maxing out your bandwidth so that it never quite reaches full load. Thus, you can avoid the instability that occurs when your bandwidth is maxed out. There's actually two ways you can do this, and as it turns out, setting a slight cap on your bandwidth so that it's not completely maxing out does reduce buffer bloat. So instead of limiting my bandwidth using the anti-buffer bloat feature, I'm opting to use the Duma OS's traffic prioritization feature to prevent my bandwidth from maxing out and spiking while in use. This way, I'm better able to sustain a stable connection while gaming. Also important to note is my waveform score after applying these settings. Not only do I achieve an A, but due to the added stability from placing a limit on my bandwidth, I'm within the parameters of minimal buffer bloat as per Waveform's testing guidelines. Duma's QoS allows me to prioritize more of my downloading bandwidth to my gaming PC while reducing its uploading bandwidth. And for my streaming PC, I've prioritized most of the uploading bandwidth for the Twitch stream. Dividing the download and upload bandwidth between my gaming and streaming PC in this way ensures that there are no unnecessary conflicts over bandwidth while I'm gaming and streaming. And of course, don't forget to open ports for your Quake Champions. This is pretty easy to do. You just log into your router and go to the port forwarding section. Usually it's located in advanced settings and then you just manually type in the ports. I've only opened the UDP ports because those are the ones where I really notice a difference. I don't really feel any change by adding the TCP ports, but to each his own. All right, so I've given you guys a lot of information in this video, but I want to get back to the original question that I asked, which was, is latency the most important metric to consider for gaming? Yes, but once your connection is good enough, how much more of a difference does having tons of bandwidth actually make? If I compare my connection now to my previous connection, uh, which was 200 megabits down, 100 megabits up, there's not really a difference. It gives me a little lower latency, but stability is about the same, mainly because games just don't use up much bandwidth. However, if you're gaming and streaming, then the answer is hell yes, I notice a difference. Just keep in mind that whether you have a 100 megabit connection or a gigabit connection, you're still gonna have to contend with buffer bloat. 
Luckily, uh, you can always upgrade your router if it really starts to bother you like it bothered me. Okay, so that is all for now. I hope this video gave you a good idea of what you can expect out of a faster connection. If you're expecting to have zero latency and hit headshots with ease, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you're a streamer and you're looking to give your viewers a buttery smooth, uninterrupted viewing experience, I, I hope you got some good insights. Anyway, flick that like button, subscribe for more, and if this be worthy, let it possess the power of your share. See you guys in the next one.